Iran launched more than 300 cruise missiles, ballistic missiles and drones toward Israel, raising concerns about broader conflict in the Middle East six months after Hamas attacked Israel. Israeli, American and other allied forces intercepted dozens of drones and the majority of missiles before they reached Israeli territory, officials said. It's the first time Iran has directly attacked Israel from Iranian territory. Here's how the conflict between the two countries escalated. Tensions in the Middle East had been building on several fronts. In addition to Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza, there have been cross-border skirmishes between Israel and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, and attacks by Yemen's Houthi militia against Western interests in the Red Sea. Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthi rebels are all backed by Iran. On April 1st, an Iranian diplomatic building in Damascus was hit in what Iran says was an Israeli airstrike. The strike killed top Iranian military officials, including a senior member of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps elite Quds Force. It was one of the highest profile killings of Iranian military leaders in years. Israel didn't confirm or deny responsibility for the strike, but Iran publicly threatened to retaliate following the attack. Israel and Iran have had a years-long shadow war. They don't attack each other directly. Iran attacks Israel through proxies, and Israel responds directly against those proxies, as opposed to directly against Iran on Iranian soil. What was different here is that this was the most direct attack on an Iranian asset that we have seen. On April 4th, Israelis started to report GPS errors, with some apps placing Tel Aviv residents in Lebanon's capital, Beirut, some 130 miles to the north. The reason? The Israeli military was scrambling GPS signals within the country to thwart missile and drone targeting systems. <laughs> On April 10th, Iran's supreme leader said that the strikes in Syria constituted an attack on Iranian soil. The same day, President Joe Biden reaffirmed U.S. support for Israel. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. On the 10th, it also emerged that U.S. intelligence reports showed that an attack could be imminent, according to U.S. officials. The tension came to a head on April 13th, when Iran began sending drones and missiles toward Israel. Air raid sirens bled across Israel and explosions were heard over Jerusalem as Israel's Iron Dome air defense system kicked in. Biden met with his national security team and issued a statement condemning the attacks and said the US helped Israel take down nearly all of the incoming drones and missiles. By early morning of April 14th, Israel lifted sheltering orders, a sign that it believes the brunt of the attack is over. Once you get into that direct back and forth. Things can escalate incredibly quickly. The United States has said publicly that they intend to defend Israel. And so right there off the bat, you're seeing how these things could spiral incredibly quickly. There's quite a bit of frayed nerves and really just a question mark over what is going to happen and where is this region going. 